So, we have been blessed with the presence of cult hero Cameron McInnes. And we thought it would be fitting for us to test out and see, well, where does, where does Cameron McInnes sit alongside some of the toughest sharks of all time? And so the brief to our dear friend and resident historian on the ET stand, Mr. Williams was, who is the toughest sharks player ever? A little history lesson with you, Matthew Williams. Take it away. Thanks, David. I'll caveat this by saying that I was a child of the late 80s. So a lot of these players that uh, I've researched and seen and uh, found, I, I never saw live. And I think you guys will fall in the same boat, especially those players in the 70s. Uh, you got to split toughness. Is it dishing it out or is it copying it? Uh, is it bravery or is it toughness or hardness? I think it's both. So we'll open with the hard heads. Uh, we've got some honourable mentions too. Most of them are coming from that era, being the 70s and gusting 80s for a few of those players. I'll let you roll the slide, please, David, as we, we open with the the hardest players uh, in regards to those that can dish it out. And uh, number five, we have legendary uh, UK prop hailing from St. Helens, who played for the Sharks from 71 to 73, including the, the was it the dirtiest or the most violent grand final of all time, the 1973 loss to Manly, unfortunately. Cliff Watson, uh, absolute legend of the game. He passed away in May 2018. So happy he got to see 2016. Uh, Stalwart at the club. Uh, did hang around the area for the rest of his, his days. Did did enormous work prior to that with St. Helens and the, and uh, Great Britain from prop. Uh, not the tallest guy, but just by all accounts, a real uh, a real hard-nosed guy in an era where there, there wasn't an interchange. It was once you were off, you were, you were substituted, and that was it, and played through so many injuries. Uh, and the like. So that's Cliff Watson there. I will say too that there's not any particular order for this one. Uh, and I'm sure you guys will be able to phone it in as well and say, hey, who was harder out of these ones? The next one is uh, Paul Kahn with number. I was going to say, Matty, I would have thought, hey, Cliff Watson would have been the toughest shark ever, actually. Well, I think it, uh, well, uh, not to throw you on the bus here, David, but I think I had an, uh, I did say in order of appearance, not. Uh, breaking as such, but we'll see with your number one anyway. There's some fresher memories, I suppose, for this player that makes number one if you're going to go that way. But Paul Kahn was a prop uh, who was not the largest guy, but uh, definitely incredibly tough. Played from 71 to 80, 75 to 81, played in both grand finals in 78, came down from Queensland, uh, played uh, a number of matches for Queensland in state of origin between 81 and 83 after he moved back north. Uh, he was originally recommended to the club by a Thomas Bishop who was coaching Brisbane Norths at the time, back in the days of the the, the very strong Brisbane comp. Uh, again, one of those players that uh, played above his weight, but also dished it out uh, in a, a very violent era. Uh, same two, same as Cliff, uh, no substitutions, or sorry, no interchange, only substitutions. Play, had to play through injury, that was standard. They all had jobs, uh, and you just watch those games back, and uh, yes, it was a different time, but my golly, they were, they were tough, so... Uh, Moving on to the next one, Steve Neen, again, who was a uh, more of a second rower, uh, who also played against his oh, above his weight. He had a, a wicked beard for most of his career. That's a, a smaller one, but he did have a big kind of bush range beard during that period. Played in the 73 grand final. Uh, again, quoted pound for pound, the toughest Sharks player of all time by some judges. Uh, there's a good write-up in the uh, Colour Me Black, White and Blue book as well uh, that was released back in the, the early 2000s talking about the, the injuries these guys played through and the just... They'd play almost every match of the year, despite the fact that they were carrying, yeah, dislocated shoulder here, dislocated uh, or insert injury here. They just kept on plying through, uh, and he was another one of those players. Uh, the next one is the most capped Kiwi player of all time in Cronulla history, with 224 matches between 77 and 89. That is uh, Dane Sorensen. Uh, he's number seven on the all-time list of Sharks players. Uh, he did disappear for one short period in the early 80s to the Roosters when the Sharks essentially had no money. But playing at prop through that era, playing, as we've noted a little while ago, uh, playing the 78, both grand finals, and then again reappearing in the success of 88 and 89 as a, a real old um, senior level-headed player that just could... Yeah, just continually turn up as well. So Dane Sorensen, I, I put him as our greatest Kiwi of all time and also one of our hardest players of all time. Uh, but number one, this one I'll, I'll throw to you guys to chat about. Good old Leslie Davidson. 
who was just a, a fixture of the Sharks Club, uh, having come across from South in the early two, early 90s, sorry, uh, right the way through to the end of 98, uh, just just continually turned up. And I haven't seen it, but I had heard from, from many people who were there, uh, a particular game at Shark Park in the early 90s involving Jason Stevens while he's still playing for the uh, the Darcy oh, yeah. Dragons, where uh, Les Davidson may have thrown a right hook and a left hook and left two Dragons players, including Jason Stevens, uh, motionless on the ground. Uh, yeah, he was. I'll throw to you guys because you guys saw a lot more of, of him. I, I remember him distinctly from about 95 onwards for, for my, um, I suppose, growing up. Uh, Find them, but you guys well, are just a, bit, a South a legend. He was yeah. a South legend before he even got to us and was a yeah. kangaroo tourist. And I remember just hearing the stories of, what do they call him, Chris Bundy? He's just an absolute beast and just gave us a whole bunch of toughness. I just think he was underrated um, in those Sharks years by the time he turned it on. He was a terrific player and was a regular trainer down at the uh, Corolla Gym down at Gunnamatta Park as well. There you go. Chris, Not the, anything I mean, on, anything on you... Les? If you if you throw say like a a loose where a Hargraves with a I don't know like an Adrian Morley and then a Martin Lang running style that was that was Les Davis and if you think about those three guys and mix them up and spit them out that was the guy running at you were going to tackle you and it was just yeah you didn't want any part of it yeah just an awkward body shape I remember and he just he ran at a million miles an hour and just like yeah limbs going and, yeah. and could throw a punch too back when that that was a judiciary didn't, game judiciary didn't count to him so it was yeah it was yeah. it wasn't Scary quite mario was. fennec but he did go to the judiciary a lot all right so that's yeah. the hardest sharks players ever we'll save <laughs> I'll give the some, rest of the panel's mentions we'll get into or do you want to do your honorable, some, mentions quick, on the quick honorable mentions quick honorable mentions uh martin lang will get a run shortly too with the braveness but martin lang was he was hard to uh chris Beatty came in in 2000 we're like who is this guy how how tough is he uh, he was a regular, another player. We're talking about it. I suppose what prompted, if you don't mind me saying, Baldo, was uh, right in front of us seeing uh, Cam McKinnis come off with blood pouring from his face, uh, from his head, sits down, someone handed him a towel. He didn't even take it. He didn't, didn't, didn't motion for the trainer or any of the staff to come and help him. He's just, he was, I suppose, just primed and I suppose probably a bit annoyed that he was off the field. Um, but yeah, just, yeah, yeah, there's no medical attention required. He just played through, don't care. Uh, but yeah, uh, Chris Beatty always reminded me of that. He constantly, I think every shot from, of him on the sideline was him. He's just beetroot head covered in blood. Um, and then obviously our greatest shark of all time, Paul Gallen. Um, yeah, just the, the, the sheer longevity, uh, the toughness, the injuries he played through, the fact that he, he didn't have, I think, a, was it one of the ligaments in his leg, I think a PCL. Uh, there was that famous line early in 2016 when he did, a, I think, his medial. Uh, he said, I think I've done my PCL, and the, the trainer said, you don't even have one. We took it out in that league. So that's, a, I suppose, a function of the uh, the toughness required to play for that long period. And, yes, Cam Smith played in a dinner suit and played for over 400 games, but the fact that, was it, yeah, Gallon played 348 matches, a majority in the front row, a few exceptions where he played 5-8 back in the day. But, yeah, it's that's just sheer hardness we'll roll forward to the bravery um and here's one that uh, will elicit a great response from you guys gavin miller probably the the bravest sharks player of all time he i i didn't see him uh, personally given my my age but uh, having seen a lot of breed players he just copped it every time he put someone through a hole he was copping that late he got late hit. belted every single time and belted so he would every run time. the line yeah. and he knew that he was going to get belted and then yeah. you know they're constantly smashing up his nose and all this sort of stuff and he just kept oh. going yeah, that's such and a legend, that guy. Played he he is the reason a lot of Sharks fans are Sharks fans, actually. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I know, too, that he, he had some stints over in the UK as well. And he, like ET, garnered a lot of UK fans to, to get interested in the, in the club and, and Australian Rugby League as well through through his exploits. Uh, so we'll roll forward to a bit of a different one. Leaping Luca Bell, early 2011, uh, in the wet at Shark Park. Sharks had opened the season. I think they were 0-4 uh, Easter weekend playing against Parramatta. Uh, Tim Smith's first game, uh, midway through the first half, Luca Bell does his ACL, continues to play, uh, thinking it's his final match ever. He was leaving the club, basically leaving uh, or retiring from the NRL at the end of that season. Uh, he was getting on, uh, played through, played the entire match. The Sharks win 11 0 uh, with a couple of Blake Ferguson tries. I don't think Cavell ended up kicking due to the injury that he had, but was essentially playing on one leg. Uh, goes away has Lars surgery when that was still a thing, uh, comes back about 12 weeks later and, and finishes the year with a swan song, plays a few games, including his final match at Shark Park, a win over the Titans, which I think was Matt Rogers' last match for the for, for the Titans anyway, against the club as well, against the Sharks. And the Sharks were 
that was a terrible season, but it got a solid win against the Titans who were in the hunt for the finals. Uh, Lukeville taking a famous intercept there where, uh, as I was dragging the lats last night, I think he's still running. He ran about 60 metres, not a noted speedster for a winger. Ducking and weaving and fending Scott Prince down the left uh, and scored in the, in the the northwest corner at Shark Park. Uh, and just, yeah, the, the, the sheer... Sheer willpower to play on one leg, knowing that that was his final match in in very difficult conditions. We thought it was his final match. Uh, that's that's sheer guts right there. So, uh, rolling on to the next one, Breck Morley. Uh, he copped a lot of stick throughout his career, but in 2003 he had a bit of a rough year midway through the season against the Tigers. He copped a broken jaw, broken jaw. Sorry, played the rest of that match with that, and then spent the next six weeks out letting that injury heal. Shortly after he re- he returned against a fancy Broncos outfit. Sharks got a bit of an upset uh, with a win in the wet there, and he copped a ruptured testicle. I think all of our eyes are still watering, and he played through that as well. So that is, and I think he only had a week or two off from it. So that is that is some that is brave right there. That is that is next level. That's probably potentially number one. Uh, we'll go to the next one. Martin Lang. Every single run, every hit up, Kamikaze. And Kamikaze is like playing it lightly. He was just a madman, and and I didn't even realize that he was a fullback growing up uh, and he oh. himself admitted he didn't have the elusiveness or the the ability or the the, the skill required to, to, to convert even into reserve grade as that so he had to remodel himself as a prop uh, in that era and imagine so John Lang was the coach for a majority of his career and seeing your son go through that that uh, that that's bravery in itself and the last one not the bravest but definitely up there given the fact that they couldn't needle it and he continued to play Dale Finucane in late 2022, he copped a bit of heat over his uh, his performance there, including missing a, a tackle on Cam Murray in that semi-final that went through. But he was playing with a rib cartilage issue uh, that is like if you a lot of people will play through broken ribs, but they can't play through rib cartilage uh, issues because it's just so painful. And they couldn't needle it, and he was still turning up. He, he did it early on in the match at Brookvale Oval that year. I remember being there with Boldo. We heard the hit from where we were. Uh, it sounded nasty. He went off and came back on, and you could tell he wasn't right. And we're like, oh, that doesn't seem good. Had a few weeks off, tried to play through it. Several weeks later, was still copying it. And and just, I suppose, the, the testament to the guy, he was the captain. Uh, he, he needed to get out there. And, yeah, it was an injury that would have uh, laid a lot of other people down. Honorable mentions, uh, Cam McKinnis, obviously. Uh, one interesting one, Warren Fisher. He played the, uh, from what I saw online anyway, 1973 grand final. Uh, he came off at halftime, but he played the best half of the first half with a punctured lung, uh, similar to, I suppose, uh, Andrew Johns played the, uh, or had a collapsed lung uh, prior to the 97 grand final. Uh, Jack Bird, we all remember his twisted elbow. He couldn't even straighten his arm. He was basically playing one-handed throughout the majority of the 2016 grand final. That's He was only 21 years old. That's guts right there and seeing him injured. Oh, sorry, he interviewed afterwards talking about it and he, he said, I wouldn't have missed this for the world, but playing with one arm's guts and to make the tackles that he did, the runs that he did, the carries he did. Uh, not sure whether he's dominant hand or not, but just shows that, that tenacity. But also too, uh, big, just overarching, anyone who's laced on a, a boot to play rugby league as it is, is is brave. Anyone that's made it to first grade and played for this great club is brave. Uh, obviously, some are, some are seemed or deemed braver than others, but anyone that's played played it at the highest level, gosh, they, they take, some, take some kahunas for that, that's for sure. I think we just worked out that they're all tough and actually what Cam McInnes does, we should just expe- expect that from rugby league players. And you haven't really told us whether Cam McInnes is tougher than any of those guys or not, William. So you completely ducked what the actual <laughs> brief was. But all right. There's a whole bunch of tough guys I, and some pretty crazy SHIT has happened to some of these guys. I did I mean, say Cam McInnes, obvious. Cam McInnes, obviously. Like, that's just unbelievable. Yeah. Cam McInnes is, I mean, you look at his game against Penrith last year where what he made 79 tackles or something you've seen. Then he, he didn't sleep. He was up with a young kid all night that wasn't sleeping. And then he took him to Taronga Zoo the next day. Uh, so he's just, yeah, he's next level. And, and like just seeing how he was the other day, that just, that's, that's him week in, week out. All right. Well, thank you, Williams. We'll kick you out. So thank you for that toughest Sharks player ever. We'll kick you out and bring in, bring Lats back for the around the league roundup. Lats, you got any contribution to the toughest Sharks ever that we missed then in 30 seconds? Yeah, mate. I, um, I thought, uh, Michael Weaponhead Porter from the eighties was, Unlucky not to get a mention. Uh, also, to wear a nick out. Yeah, Thought he was a pretty, pretty tough bloke. And how could, I don't know how Williams could leave out this bloke. Scored a try in every game he played. 
100% winning record with the Sharks and the great Tony Williams. <laughs> right, fair enough. Oh, I don't know how we left Tony Williams out either. Okay. All right. 